Hello, Christian the Livingstone here, and uh, you probably thought I was Santa Claus, right? With red sleigh here. No. But it is uh, January 2023 still, and I say still because uh, it seemed like I was just here doing uh, this very thing uh, a short time ago uh, this month, and I was. Uh, it was uh, the previous project, the, uh, the trike, the... Uh, Electric trike evolution. And I had so much fun with that uh, project. I, I'm getting right back on uh, to another project. I kind of lined up for the winter here. And uh, can I still see? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. And uh, that project uh, involves another one of my favorite things. I mean, the trike stuff, the e-bike stuff, those are one of my favorite things. And uh, the other one of my favorite things for projects and stuff and making videos uh, is uh, the zero turn mower stuff. And uh, I have a, a personal uh, zero turn mower, but I've done other riding mower uh, projects and included them in videos. But on my own personal one, uh, I uh, really uh, enjoy uh, especially well. And what that, uh, what this new uh, project is going to involve is uh, uh, something related to that and uh, you know that mower it's a Dixon mower it's a Dixon zero turn with the old friction cone drive uh, uh, transaxle system and they're kind of outdated and obsolete but uh, boy I have a, a lot of fun and it, it becomes very low maintenance once you kind of understand them and uh, uh, you know, maybe do a few modifications, they become uh, quite efficient. And, you know, you never have to worry about uh, one of the uh, hydraulic uh, uh, drivers in the back uh, going bad and costing a thousand bucks. You just change out some cones. But anyway, so on another uh, project, another video, uh, I uh, uh, upgraded that uh, mower's uh, motor from a, a single cylinder to a, uh, a V-twin. And that was the uh, first, uh, you know, new motor I, I think I bought for anything, car, boat, lawnmower, and it's a, a V-twin uh, Briggs motor. It's an Intec. Uh, I, I bought it uh, brand new, old stock, online, free shipping, no tax, and uh, it was uh, very well priced at uh, $499 to my door. You see this alternator, that's why I got this motor so cheaply. This is a, a three amp alternator only. And uh, you know, usually you need a, a nine amp uh, or more alternator to uh, have enough amperage to uh, electromechanically, uh, magnetically uh, engage a, a PTO drive. And you know, that's a safer, newer way. I just got, uh, you know, a, a throw lever there, an idler. So. I don't need any of that extra amperage and power to be generated from this. But I did uh, put on a, uh, an electric fuel pump and that uh, runs at uh, 1.2 amps. And uh, I also have this uh, uh, sprayer. I uh, run a, a 12 volt sprayer and that runs when I'm operating it at 1.7 amps. And also there's this uh, anti-backfire uh, 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 solenoid back there and that runs at about 300 milliamps and so all three of those you know when they're running uh, 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 you know will expend the the three uh, amps uh, alternator so you know if I'm spraying and I do spray around the corner for a, a, an old uh, neighbor uh, customer of mine over there and uh, so I deleted the uh, electric fuel pump and I went back to the uh, vacuum pump just so I, I wouldn't have to run my battery down when I'm spraying with the sprayer and uh, uh, I also uh, uh, disabled that uh, solenoid years ago nine whatever it was and uh, so it's it's a brand new motor to me and uh, you know I did some modifications and one of the modifications I did uh, was put uh, a remote located oil uh, filter you know it's got two lines they just go around instead of trying to 
get the filter off and make it a mess uh, right in the crevice where the, the motor is. And so, you know, I, I've got it hanging right out, out off the back and the side. And uh, this project, you know, it's not necessary, but I'm going to do it because uh, it's going to involve some of my other favorite things, and that is welding. So there will be welding on this project. And uh, it will involve uh, uh, another favorite material of mine, and that is uh, aluminum diamond plate. And uh, the primary part of the uh, video will involve this. What is this? It looks like a futuristic uh, something, an accelerator, particle accelerator. No. Got the inlet and outlet. Uh, so this is going to be daisy chained into that same oil filter uh, uh, system that is already going on in the back of the, the mower. And uh, this is an oil cooler, of course. But I've never seen one uh, on anything, uh, you know, uh, using one of these. This might be a new uh, design uh, from Asia. You know, thank you, China. This, uh, I, I believe I paid, uh, the, the price uh, was like $37, and, and just a real good value, and uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Zero turn Dixon mower, you know, it's got the Briggs V-twin back there. You can see I've already got the uh, external oil filter remote locator there, but uh, then I put that second muffler back there, and it got a little closer, uh, you know, that, that muffler wasn't hanging out there before. I put that on after, and I didn't move the uh, oil filter, but uh, I, I will. I'm gonna move that oil filter, you know, better. But uh, these are all the materials. I just thought I'd show you them first. Uh, everything that uh, is, is coming has come, except uh, maybe for some more of these uh, Pex uh, clamp. I've, I've got a bunch of them, but uh, in this size, the ideal size, 21 millimeter, I only have one, so I, I got a bunch more of those coming, and they'll be uh, on time. So anyway, the oil cooler, of course, that was 37, 38 bucks, I don't know, maybe 40 bucks delivered, but I got some of these uh, stainless zip ties. Uh, the small amount came with the, uh, the wrap, the exhaust, uh, fiberglass wrap uh, but it wasn't enough because uh, I know I'm going to need more want more and use them for other stuff probably I've never used them before but uh, I like the idea stainless zip tie and I got some hose eh, I could only get uh, you know as small a, a length as this it's half inch uh, inside diameter that'll be for the uh, oil uh, tubing this says spray hose but uh, it'll be fine it's it's even good year so quality's uh, quite good and here's a, a key element right here is this uh, gauge this temperature gauge uh, dial dial type and uh, this was surprisingly well priced I think it was fifteen dollars plus maybe some shipping uh, and uh, you know it's great it's a uh, and you can get the uh, dials in different increments. This one, you know, averages uh, from 50 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's right in the ballpark, because I'm guessing it's going to be about 200 degrees uh, is the average uh, temperature somewhere. So that'll put the uh, dial right at the top, somewhere in the middle, so it'll be easy to spot, not at one extreme or the other. And uh, you can see these... Uh, uh, tapered uh, threads just like in uh, you know uh, lawn uh, sprinkler systems I, I just I, I, I'm familiar with these uh, threads I like them so I got uh, two fittings that that will uh, go into it'll either, either go into one of these uh, couplers this is PVC cheap you know these are about I don't know 38 cents a piece but I paid a little more and got this one too. It's a poly one. And uh, poly, I think, is going to be the better choice. And it's uh, not female, female, it's a uh, female uh, uh, male. And this male has a, a nice thick wall. And, and you know, I'm going to grind down some of this to seat it in that uh, dipstick too. And it's going to go on my mower, on the back of the mower. And uh, not only that, not because it needs the extra cooling, but I just want to do it because, like I said, that's the uh, first uh, 
new motor, uh, new motor I put on anything, and uh, so I, I kind of like it, and uh, it's going to get you know some special treatment with the oil cooler, but uh, I'm also going to make it uh, kind of a, a, an experiment too. We're going to find out uh, what the uh, difference is between uh, an oil cooler like this and not, and uh, we're going to do that with this. This is a plain old uh, thermometer temperature gauge from uh, some uh, beer brewing equipment. Okay, and as you can see, I traced out uh, how this looks. The, the dipstick hangs down, what distance. So, you know, you can measure it too, but uh, I just marked it on the uh, bench here and uh, it'll be a, a lasting uh, uh, reminder of what I'm doing because you'll see I've got these uh, threads ground off and uh, let me show you what I used uh, a Dremel yeah just a little barrel bit grinder that uh, ground goes down and this seats in I'm gonna replace the dipstick and uh, I bought this part uh, separate so you know I still got you know the old one on the motor right now with the dipstick in it so you know if I get something wrong you know I still got the factory but I did I wanted to have uh, you know a control group here so this will be completely separate from the factory stuff but undoubtedly it'll go right in and already uh, all the planets look like they're going to come into alignment okay now i'm getting ready to go in with this uh, little uh dremel wheel bit and uh kind of groove put some grooves on the inner inner side of this and maybe deepen some of the little lips and edges on here just to get more of a a mechanical bond you see that that seats in just about uh, snug but I, I took a little extra off just so there'd be enough room for the adhesive and some of that those grooves in there that they're not there yet but they will be so uh, yeah I'm just going for it I'm gonna put the grooves in and bolt the uh, inner and outer and uh, mix up some JB weld sink this baby in there and I think I'll just hold with what I got I'll give that a 24 hours or more and uh, see if it, it will need a, a couple of set screws uh, on two sides maybe. Maybe not. Slathered on the two parts JB Weld. Can you see that? Alright, it's going in the tube. Here it goes. Is that enough? Too much? Too late now. It's in. And you can see it kind of squeezed out. That's just right. Could have, used, could have used a little more squeeze there, but I'm going to twist it to get really seated down in there. And uh, that's all I'm going to do today. That is done. I'm going to let that uh, cure for 24 hours by just looking over my shoulder. So I'll be able to know what the temperature is for some reason. Like I said, I'm babying the motor. I, I, I dig the uh, mower and the motor. <laughs> I also made the, uh, uh, the video on the uh, second uh, muffler addition to the uh, mower to quiet the mower down in neighborhoods and things. And that was a good project. It turned out well and it uh, did make a difference. And, uh, you know, it may not be revolutionary, but uh, it was helpful and it was cheap. This is fairly cheap too. So, but not only that, it gets better. It gets better because with the cooler and the temperature gauge, which is also the dipstick. In the back there, you know, it's a, it's a V twin. So you got two uh, uh, headers coming down into the muffler and then there's that second smaller muffler. And this, uh, this oil cooler is gonna be situated back there. And there is, and be it heat produced by the uh, exhaust system. So I want to kind of quell some of that too. It's going to have to be very strategically placed. I'm going to try to get uh, some of the uh, cowling vent uh, to be pointed in this direction. So I might grab a little scoop uh, uh, with the aluminum diamond plate to kind of coax it to come over. I haven't decided that, but generally speaking, it won't be much of an issue. I'll take the temperatures before, after, during, whatever. 
But uh, what I'm going to also do while I'm there is wrap the exhaust system with this uh, fiberglass uh, wrap. And you know, you see this on motorcycles and stuff. I've got uh, some uh, stainless steel zip ties, so you know, I'll put some clear silicone zip tie and it will wrap that uh, exhaust system, take away some of that ambient uh, air temperature around the uh, new oil cooler. And not only that, that wrap on the uh, muffler will make it quieter still. Okay, yeah, I just checked it uh, a little more closely. About 78 degrees ambient temperature, right about where the uh, oil cooler is going to go. And, you know, it's a, the temperature outside is, uh, I believe, 62 degrees. Uh, and uh, there's a little bit of a, a, a breeze. So, you know, that's the, the difference between the ambient air temperature and, and right under there. So when I wrap this thing, you know, the air temperature outside might be a little higher, lower, I don't know, but uh, we'll see that difference there. It's uh, 16 degrees higher uh, right here. So we'll see if that holds true later, and uh, it uh, might even uh, be better after the wrap, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, uh, this... Uh, this uh, dipstick uh, tube, uh, it isn't as easy to read as uh, the old uh, tube or the dipstick was. You know, there, I might put some little crisscrosses to create some surface tension right between those points just to make it easier to read, but uh, it's readable. And one other slight deficit, this mouth isn't uh, as open wide as, as this was, so you know, you got to go slower, put a, a funnel in there. Just be a little more careful in filling. Not a big deal. But overall, I, I did. I liked this. I liked uh, being able to look over my shoulder. But I was really kind of surprised that uh, it didn't run much hotter uh, under a load. Okay, I'm beginning the second stage here. And that uh, includes uh, removing this muffler and uh, then wrapping it. But... Uh, you know, I've got clearance uh, underneath here between the muffler and the, uh, the frame, but uh, at the hitch here, not so much. So I'm going to remove this and uh, I'm going to try not to get too caught up in, you know, modifying this so it, it creates clearance here so I can get the wrap on there and get this back on. What I'm going to maybe do is uh, see if this will mount over and that will create some space. Okay, and there's the quick uh, tack up. I'll unbolt it and take it over the bench and finish the weld. I'll weld on top and behind it too because this uh, strap is a little less hefty or lighter gauge than this, but it's pretty close. I could do it on the top and that'd be fine, but we'll see. Okay, and it's going pretty good. This is uh, the first portion, just the, uh, the one uh, header. Uh, and uh, you know, you, you twist it on, you wrap it around, and I'm putting the uh, termination points on these uh, zip ties uh, in the back so uh, you know you don't see them or they don't snag. But yeah, and uh, I'm putting some uh, silicone, uh, you know, when you fold it uh, under each uh, end just so it glues, it doesn't get frayed and a little tacky under there, see. This is uh, folded over before it gets uh, cemented down and then pinned down with the uh, zip tie. But I'll show you the, uh, the way they uh, show you how to terminate these things. Yeah, these stainless zip ties, you know, they don't even snug down and, until you do that, until you twist and turn them under. That's what snugs these babies down. It also creates that blocker so it'll never come loose. But, uh, yeah, you can't just pull these... Uh, ends and have it snug down it, it just it's not not very good so yeah cut it uh, about a half an inch uh, at the end and then uh, grab it turn it and uh, I'm tapping them down because you know this is a, a little bit of a, a ear edge that but I'll smash them down and uh, it is done complete my first wrap job uh, 
And uh, yeah, it's fiberglass. It's a little itchy, but uh, this is what I got left over. And uh, between this partial tube and this half a tube, there's about that much silicone under there, pasting it all in place. And uh, it probably wasn't needed, but it's, it's very helpful to have silicone in there to kind of wrap these when it all sets up. Uh, it'll be quite snug. The exhaust will be quieted by that. So, wow, fun. Fun stuff, favorite materials, you know, favorite mower. So, uh, you know, people out there uh, who, you know, maybe the commercial guys, maybe they already understand that, oh yeah, oil, uh, the addition of an oil cooler is, is big. You know, it, uh, you know, we're out there all summer long and, you know, I don't run mine very hard. I mean, I used to do a few properties around the corner before I moved to this area. And, I still, I do maintain this property's uh, grounds with, with my mower, but it's a small apartment complex and I have fun with the uh, landscaping and stuff and I have another project going on with that for the spring here. But, uh, you know, the commercial guys may get something uh, out of this because, you know, uh, there are just ready fit uh, products for, uh, especially like the Kawasaki, they've got a simple little oil cooler thing that's uh, it's doesn't look very effective to me i mean but uh there's not a lot out there on you know adding something that compares to this size here i think this is about the right amount there are different styles too they got them bigger longer shorter this seemed to be just about right for me Tester. All right, so here we are, and uh, this guy uh, takes one of those kind of oil coolers, and he, uh, this is a 20 horsepower Briggs like mine, except this is a, a Vanguard motor, and the Vanguard motors have a, uh, a metal shroud, so he cuts into that and uh, just builds a, a, a housing on a housing to pick up. Uh, some of that airflow from the flywheel is blowing it around and he cuts right into that or uh, punches some holes builds a shroud around it to get that airflow you know to assist that uh, radiator that small radiator so he comes up with a pretty good solution you know to, to do it but you know for me I, I didn't want to punch into my shroud because it's only poly plastic anyway and you know, if I had a Vanguard, I, I might think about that because, you know, I like to do the uh, aluminum uh, diamond plate and, you know, I can weld and make a kind of a cool diamond plate shroud hanging off it. But, uh, no, nah, that, that wasn't my solution, but this is a solution. And uh, here's another guy with more of a, kind of a commercial uh, strength uh, uh, solution because his unit is... Uh, Hydros, you know, he's got the hydros, but he takes the uh, a radiator. You see, there's two radiators there. There's the one for the uh, probably the hydros, and then the other one for the uh, oil uh, engine oil cooler. So, uh, and undoubtedly, those fans running there, he's probably got the uh, 16 amp alternator. So, you know, he can run those fans and not worry about how much amperage uh, is being sucked out of there, you know, won't uh, affect the battery, but, you know, my uh, alternator is uh, only a 3 amp alternator, so I'm certainly not going to run bands just to, to do that, mine is a kind of a lower tech uh, fashion, but this is, a, this is a, a smart solution, none of this is obtrusive or in the way of anything, he pastes it right uh, towards the back of the seat, so, hey, great, that's, uh, that's, out of the way, and uh, I like this solution too. If I had a, you know, a, I don't know, a hydro unit with, uh, you know, more amperage on the alternator. But this is another. This is a, a little lower tech, uh, like I'm going. Uh, but uh, I'm just bringing my uh, oil cooler down below here, and I'm trusting that I'm not going to need as much of that uh, airflow to, uh, uh, you know, get the. the comparable oil cooling ability, just the, the sheer volume. My uh, oil cooler holds 14 ounces of oil, and with the uh, hoses, that's going to be about 16 total ounces. So, you know, that's a lot, of, a lot of extra oil being added to the system. It's circulating, it's going to be great. But uh, 
yeah, here's uh, two guys who were out there and they uh, uh, put out what uh, their solution was. Mine's uh, going to be another uh, attack on uh, dealing with uh, it uh, from you know what I've got uh, to deal with. I mean, the, the configuration of my mower and the materials that the shroud is made out of, and you know the fact that uh, you know. I don't want to use any amperage uh, to run any fans or anything. So, yeah, those are two solutions. I'm going to come up with a third, and we're going to see how it goes. With the in and out on one side, they got others that go in and out, but to, I may have to offset this a little bit in the back because I'm not going to put elbows or try to get the uh, turns out of this, and I don't want this to catch the hoses to catch on anything so maybe offset a little have some fun with the uh, way the uh, fabrication uh, is done I don't run this as hard as I used to and uh, but the the rationale really is on these air-cooled motors and this is a Briggs uh, Intag V twin uh, uh, 20 horsepower and it's not just the Briggs that uh, you know it can be an issue for the uh, Kohler's and the uh, Kawasaki's have the same uh, uh, tendency, and that is if mice uh, nest in here and uh, you don't realize that that can inhibit the cooling on one of these cylinders or maybe both of them, but uh, what will happen if it's not cooling well, that uh, the uh, sleeve, the valve guide sleeve that's uh, right under this spring here, since the uh, aluminum head conducts uh, heat better than steel. That steel sleeve in there doesn't expand as quickly as the aluminum around it. It's just pressed in there at the factory. So automobiles don't have that problem and uh, you know if this uh, valve sleeve does uh, scoot out uh, because of the, the heating uh, uh, of the metals differently and uh, you're not getting enough cooling up there, uh, it's usually not a catastrophic failure but uh, what will happen is it won't allow the, uh, uh, the rocker to rock uh, enough and it'll uh, bend one of these um, rods and you know then it'll start running crummy and, and sometimes you can even lose one of these rods into the crankcase. That would be somewhat catastrophic uh, but uh, oftentimes uh, when that problem does happen uh, guys pull the heads off and they can uh, knock that uh, a sleeve, that valve guide sleeve back in and peen it around uh, the uh, lip of it and get it to hold. Uh. Okay, there's still some of that burn off of that silicone uh, under there, but uh, you know, these conditions, it's about 41 degrees today and uh, you saw it was running about 70 degrees uh, ambient down here. That's 8 degrees less than it was uh, the other time when uh, the exhaust wasn't wrapped and it's a little lower on the uh, temp here. I, I was running it with the deck going, uh, but you know, not uh, powering the, the mower itself. Uh, and that was close. I'm just using that uh, uh, oil temperature to give me an idea of it being fully warmed up. And 190 uh, the other day when it was warmer uh, was the operant uh, temperature uh, in the oil. But oh, and that's interesting. Uh, now that I've shut it down for about five minutes, the temperature went up there without that uh, airflow moving and I, I'm sure you saw the uh, little piece of cardboard I held up there. I've identified a, a few uh, good uh, airflow areas and you know it occurred to me to want to make maybe a little air scoop to kind of bring some of that air back down but I don't think so. This single little point here on the thermometer you know caught that air and kept it at about 78 it's about 90 now so you know that airflow is is helping but it's it's only got a small surface to catch there just imagine that you know with all those fins and you know the movement of air uh, you know through the blower housing the, the fan shroud from the flywheel you know it, it blows right into the heads and and uh you know there's a lot going on back there in a good way and uh but I think when this uh, when this gets up there, those those uh, fins will just catch all sorts of uh, air, and uh, I don't think I'll uh, tend to want to make a uh, 
you know, an air scoop of some sort. Show off that uh, diamond plate aluminum glove and stuff. You'll see some other uh, portions where I use diamond plate on that mower. So there you have it. I haven't even started the project. Sometimes I'll do the intro and the outro uh, like this, but uh, I can't really do the outro right now because it's not done. I don't know what I've encountered yet. So this may be just the intro. Okay, the second stage is a little on uh, hold right now, but uh, actually uh, not so much. I'm gonna just keep motoring on and go to the third stage and I'm gonna start by uh, taking off this uh, bracket on both sides, just with the little Dremel cutting wheel and uh, some uh, diamond plate will be in its place. Okay, and this is pretty much what I'm going for. Uh, simple design, pretty much parallel uh, lines here and uh, this uh, diagonal kind of approximates uh, this line here so there's a little symmetry visually speaking but uh, you know flush flush to the, the corner here offset though plenty of room to uh, turn those hoses around there okay and here's my method for cutting those things this uh, I've got earplugs on, so, you know, I can't hear perfectly well, but uh, I'll talk. But uh, the diamond plate uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum will uh, load up, uh, you know, on the, uh, the disc wheel, so the uh, wax helps. That's my basic method for cutting. I'll, uh, Cut the rest and drill a hole. You'll see. Okay, and there's the hole and the hole saw. You know, my tools are kind of crude, but uh, you know, I, you can almost see the design of this is, you know, uh, taking into account the tools I'm using because they're kind of primitive. I, I don't want to have, you know, uh, real elaborate cuts or anything. I want to keep them simple, straight, round. Now this isn't even, uh, you know, the exact size I would choose, but you know, it's a little larger, but uh, that's better than too small, I think. But uh, and here's a little action expander helps keep those edges, you know, straight and good. I can roll it here. Okay, there it is. Uh, that's what I've come up with. I just joined those two templates together and. I got two bends there, and I think this will uh, be able to be reproduced on here and uh, still be able to get at just about everything without any issues to speak of. But yeah, fun. Fun stuff. Okay, there it is. A couple of 90s. One's an Innie, one's an Audi. We'll see how it uh, shakes out. Okay, and there it is, and I think I can work with that. You know, it's pretty flush right up in there to the corner of the fins, and uh, I'll tack it uh, first before I put any uh, bolt holes, but it uh, seems to be placed about right, and the bends are right. A little, a little gappy right on this corner, but uh, when the bolt goes through there, it'll paste it down well enough. Yeah. The planets are in alignment. But a little bit of rake back this way. I don't know if that's ideal, whether it be better flatter. I could turn this some, but uh, already I'm noticing that's pretty close there, so I might, I might do something about that. Take a little metal off there just to get at that one uh, little little uh, throttle uh, adjustment. All right, maybe I can capture a little spot of weld. I close the uh, garage door. There's wind out there and it affects things. I could use some better positioning, but uh,
That's not too bad. The termination could have been better. I know. You may be sensing a theme. All the aluminum diamond plate. I just did the stuff. All right, there it is. My new carburetor, $30.99. There was no uh, shipping. And uh, thank you, China. You know, it's got that uh, solenoid that uh, uh, matches up. I already took it off and made sure it's the uh, same type. Where is it? Uh, yeah, it's right in there. That one's coming off. The other one's going on. Okay, and here's the solenoid uh, from the uh, new cheapo uh, third party. Uh, I think it's even better looking than the, the Nikki one from uh, Japan, but uh, here it is, uh, and the old one's coming off, but uh, I thought I'd just show you that, uh, you know, it's closed with the uh, switch off, but, uh, you know, when you turn it and you, you start it, it uh, pulls it in, but uh, as soon as you uh, turn the switch off, it plugs again, so that'll stop the uh, flow of the gas, you know, even even after it's shut off, you know, that flywheel's turning pretty fast and it's got a lot of locomotion, but uh, here we go. We are turning the key switch. It works. Okay. So I'll get to uh, buttoning all this up uh, and uh, I double check the uh, throttle. Everything's precise because once I get that uh, cooler in here, it's going to kind of, kind of, make things more difficult so I'll put those uh, those other uh, bolts uh, on the, the header see these go go up in there and uh, they'll be easier to get to and these uh, hexes are 3 8 uh, whereas the normal head is a half inch so I'll be able to get uh, a uh, socket on it and a wrench on it easier and it'll have more length blah 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 Okay, and there's those uh, bolt heads now. And uh, I think I said before, it, uh, uh, the hex uh, changed from a half down to three eighths, but it doesn't, it changes from a half down to uh, seven sixteenths. And that length there uh, makes it a lot easier, both sides. It's, uh, and especially with this wrap around the side. Now you can actually get a socket in, I don't know, three out of four cases. Otherwise, just an open-end wrench uh, grabs onto those real nicely. So, you know, if I ever start fumbling around with this uh, muffler again, it'll be a little quicker, easier going in. Okay, and there it is all mounted. You can see uh, I've set this back a little bit. I used the two existing holes and then just put a third one uh, so I didn't have needlessly drilled holes. So this sets back about two inches now you know not too uh, close to anything but a little cooler between here that gusset uh, as you can see it uh, hangs under there just to give some support for for this right here in case this you know tended to flex and get some uh, shear forces uh, that'll prevent that but uh, and uh, you know the alignment's good and it uh, doesn't uh, uh, go beyond the, the bumper here. I'll probably uh, build a bumper uh, for this, but uh, for now it's uh, it's pretty much uh, protected. But yeah, I'll do the uh, plumbing uh, tomorrow probably. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm having a blast. It's going well, and uh, I'm liking it. All right, my method is to make this as simple and straightforward and you know not getting too excessive but uh, you can see I'm gonna take off the fitting to the motor but I'm gonna leave the fitting here because that's easy to just uh, latch on to but uh, I'll get the uh, hose started on this uh, and then screw it on and then I'll work out the length over here and I'll probably uh, on this one just uh, uh, break this loose, uh, cut off an inch. I'll just keep using the same hose, but shorten it a little. It doesn't need to be this long. But I got a big old bunch uh, of this stuff, and it's half inch. Uh, you know, that's what half inch looks like. It. I was a little wondering about, you know, how 
this hex head was so small and this is so large, but basically uh, it'll be a, an easy fit to this uh, half inch stuff. Goes in, it'll crimp real nice with those PEX clamps. Okay, and there it is the uh, plumbing, the routing. Uh, as you can see, I kind of had to stagger these two uh, clamps because uh, it just jammed up too much in there. And uh, that's the only uh, one criticism I have of the uh, uh, designing and engineering of this. It's uh, too tight. You know, they probably are used to people using a little, uh, you know, smaller side wall of uh, tubing. But this is heavy duty stuff, good stuff, and uh, it just uh, jams up in there. So you really got to shoehorn that in. And uh, so that's what I did. And uh, I'm ready to put some uh, oil in it now. Everything went pretty well. I've got uh, oil in it and uh, you know I put some serrations on the end of that dipstick uh, temperature uh, uh, thermometer and you know it's it's a little hard to read those serrations help a little but uh, so I dipped it uh, ran the motor turned it over a few times got it to, to fill up everything the uh, oil filter the cooler I believe uh, it's proper now and uh, I used uh, 30 weight oil and some synthetic. I blended them together. But uh, right now the uh, temperature here seems to be about 75 or more degrees. So I'm not going to do the baseline. Uh, uh, I'm going to wait till uh, probably tomorrow and uh, uh, wait for 62 degrees and then run this sucker and see what the, the temperature dropped. The uh, baseline seems to be uh, about 190 before this uh, oil cooler went on. So. I don't know what to expect. I, I'm thinking maybe 175 will be the new baseline. Maybe not that much. We'll see. for 10 minutes the deck is engaged I've been uh, you know powering the motor I haven't looked back to see what the temperature is but here it is the big reveal Them to uh, actually verify. There it is. It is 175. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of air movement back here, and this uh, picks up on it in a good way. And uh, I'll show you the cutaway from the uh, seller uh, uh, where they uh, uh, cut it in half, and you can see there's even fins on the inside of the cylinder here. So. You know, it's a it's a good design. It's not just a, a tube, uh, you know, with a wall between it. There's uh, fins inside too. So this uh, really does uh, the job, I think. And you know, uh, 175 degrees versus uh, 90 degrees. I'm guessing that's uh, really significant. But you know, I'm no expert. I'm no scientist or anything like that. So uh, I'll leave that to others to suggest what that might mean. I mean, uh, you know, the oil coolers that they'll put on uh, autos, cars, you know, they don't want it to get too cool. And, uh, you know, they'll have uh, thermostats before the uh, oil will circulate. Because, uh, you know, when you're uh, hot rodding, uh, you know, you don't want the oil too, uh, the viscosity too uh, thick and slow things down. So that can create resistance. But for this, uh, you know, less is more, undoubtedly. There's this doesn't have a radiator, it's not uh, water cooled, so it needs everything it can get. And uh, so I'm going to be happy as a clam, you know, knowing that I'm you know, buzzing around on this thing at uh, 15 degrees cooler in the oil uh, temperature. And, uh, you know, all three of these phases that uh, stage one with just the uh, gauge, and then stage two, uh, you know, jacketing the. Uh, 
uh, exhaust system, and then the oil cooler. You could do each one of these things independently. You don't have to do all three, but each one I think will stand on its own. I, I, I dig the quieting uh, action of that uh, wrap on the exhaust. Uh, you know, some people may want to do just that, or they've got a, a better position and spot for just an oil cooler without any of this other stuff. And they'll just know it's cooler. And so, or if you just want to do uh, the gauge, that's you know a low cost uh, proposition right there. So it's been a great project. It really has. And you know uh, the route I took. Uh, you know I spent a little more money than you know I could have by buying the extra tube and oh that big bunch of hose was a little costly. But uh, and the diamond plate. So but yeah, I enjoy. Uh, you know, spending that kind of money. It's not a bunch, but... Uh... Okay, and here's that uh, cutaway of the uh, oil cooler. This is the one I have, the dual pass, with the two chambers. And it's kind of cool that you see that it has the fins even inside the chambers. And I do like that. But they have one that's uh, uh, just a straight through, you know. You could string a couple of those uh, in a car somewhere. And here is a... Uh, here is a, a typical V-twin. This is a Duramax motor. And, you know, some of these uh, V-twins do come with an, an external oil cooler. And you can see how they have this uh, routed here. This is the underside uh, vertical shaft. And uh, it, it's kind of similar to how mine comes off the, uh, uh, the oil filter uh, uh, plumbing area. But, uh, they, uh, I guess there's some holes punched through the shroud here that blows through and they've got a backing plate so it just doesn't blow straight through it kind of tees off so you know you could take a, a design note from this and do it on, uh, on any other bridge motor if you wanted to slap this up against the, uh, the blower housing shroud somewhere that uh, might be clean and easy and way to do it but Interestingly, you see they've got the uh, oil filter uh, pointed upwards, so guess what happens when you remove the oil cooler? You know, it just drools down all under the motor, and it's this is a, a messy proposition here. But, you know, there it is. They've got an oil cooler on. This is a Duramax, and uh, I believe the uh, Predator motors, the V-twins uh, that you can get from Harbor Freight have uh, an oil cooler like this. Now, I'm guessing this is, you know, four or five ounces, uh, you know, with everything, that the hose and stuff. So it's not a big one, but, uh, you know, it's something. So I'd be curious uh, if anybody has feedback about this stuff uh, uh, as far as how, how hot they run with or without them. So, well, I'll quit recording now. I've, I've said it. And here's one, one more clip. Uh, before it was 190, the baseline was. Then when the uh, oil cooler went on, it dropped down to 175. But th these were both taken, uh, you know, uh, at 62 degrees, uh, you know, the average uh, ambient uh, air temperature. But, uh, you know, when it gets to summertime, uh, this uh, 175 might kick up uh, another 10 degrees to about 185. But I'm guessing it would have been, you know, still 15 degrees more at 200, you know, at uh, 100 degrees. I'll, uh, I'll add some, uh, I'll add a, an update in the uh, text description of this uh, YouTube video, and I'll give an update, uh, you know, during the summer. Undoubtedly, I'll remember and, and put that as an update and say, okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's running uh, now in the hot heat of the summer, 100 degree temperatures, you know, it's no longer staying at 175. It's uh, 185 now, and so uh, I, I, I won't be surprised by that, but I, I'm guessing that, you know, a typical uh, mower, so somebody else could put in the comments and say, yeah, I've got a V-twin just about like yours. It's a Kohler or Kawasaki or Briggs, and, uh, you know, in the summer I'm running 200 degrees, uh, uh, you know, all the time, you know, if, if they've got some kind of a, 
a sensor that they can tell. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to know what this would normally run at uh, in the heat of the summer. But, you know, just running at uh, uh, hot as I can get it at 62 degrees, it was uh, 190. Now, as hot as I can get it, 175. So, I'm thinking it probably won't get uh, get any more than 185. I got lucky and uh, uh, nailed it to uh, guessing how uh, much the temperature would come down at 175 and it, that just happened to be where it landed so I, I got lucky on that one and I'm guessing again that it this will always be 15 degrees uh, cooler with that uh, big old oil cooler on there. Love that thing.